the blob of functions, or infinite limits we encountered previously, actually show up quite a lot, even in functions we will be using very often. And this video will encounter the most important examples of functions with infinite limits in innocent looking functions. So let us start with f from r uh, with expression of 2 to r alpha of x equals 3 over x minus 2. Looks innocent, right? Just a polynomial. Well, you have to be careful at equals 2 because you are dividing by, two, uh, by 0 over there. So what happens if you approach 2 from below? So the limit x to 2 minus. So if you plug in, say, 1.9, for example, you get 3 over 1.9 minus 2 equals 3 over minus 0.1. So that will be minus 30. If you plug in 1.99, you get 3 over minus 0 0.01. So that will be minus 300. I already see what's going to happen if you plug in more x's uh, closer and closer to 2, but slightly below 2, uh, your uh, uh, a denominator uh, will become closer and closer to 0, but uh, be still, still be negative. So you get something like minus something over something which is very small. So this you will tend to minus infinity. So this limit will be minus infinity. What's happening if you come from the other side? So if you take the limit x to 2 plus, so for example, plug in 2.1, then you have 3 over 2.1 minus 2, so 3 over 0.1 equals 30. And then you continue, uh, plug in uh, 2.01, you get 3 over 0, uh, 0 0.01 equals 300, and so on and so on. So you see you will again be blowing up, but now you are going up to plus infinity. You get higher and higher, but up to plus infinity. So that's what happens if you come from the other side. Well, and now you see that even if you allow limits to be plus or minus infinity, the limits going from minus and from plus are not the same. And if those limits are not the same, then we always say that the limit x going to 2 does not exist. So the problem here is not that you are blowing up, but the problem is that you are blowing up in two different ways. Not in the same way, so the limit does not exist. First example. Second, uh, going from uh, look at the domain, uh, uh, 0 pi with the exception of pi over 2, so small domain, to r, f of x equals the tangent of x. Okay, we're going to use that one a lot. Tangent of x equals sine of x over cosine x. So what do we know about the sine and the cosine if in the domain? Well, if x is between 0 and pi over 2, and the sine of x is positive, and the cosine of x is positive as well. However, if you uh, approach uh, pi over 2, the cosine of x will become very, very small. So you have the sine of x, which is approximately 1. Cosine of x will be very, very small. So you have 1 over something very, very small will blow up. Both are positive, so we'll go, you will blow up to plus infinity if you approach pi over 2 from below. If you try to approach it from the other side, from above, so uh, x between pi over 2 and pi, then sine of x will still be positive. However, cosine x, remember the figure goes like this, now it will be negative. So cosine of x will be negative. So if you approach pi over 2, uh, you get uh, the sines where uh, almost 1, and the cosine of x will tend to 0. So now you have again 1 over something very, very small, but now as something very, very small and negative. So this limit will be minus infinity. So you see already with the very uh, function which is used very often as a tangent of x, you see that the uh, uh, limit x from pi to pi over 2 from the uh, minus side is not the same as from the plus side, and even worse, they are both infinity and minus infinity. So also the tangent of x has such an infinite limit. Uh, let's go on with the logarithm of x f going from 0 infinity, so all positive reals with the exception of a 0, onto r, f of x equals the uh, logarithm of x with uh, base number e. 
Zero is not in domain. So what happens if we approach zero? Of course, we can only come from the plus side, since the negatives are not even in our domain. So what happens then? So if we try to compute that, well, we know if uh, w equals the log of x, then that's uh, taking exponents left and right, then we know e to the power w equals x. So question is, uh, we want x to be very close to zero, so can we find a w such that e to the power w equals x equals zero, or zero uh, from, from above, so a number slightly bigger than zero. Can we find w such that this is equation satisfied? Well, no, we can't, because the exponential function is always positive. But we can get very close to zero, though, if we take w to be very, very negative, like minus thousand, minus a million. So, uh, because then e to the power w equals e to the power minus thousand, e to the power minus a million. So, then this quantity over here will become very small. So, we can get arbitrarily close to zero by taking w arbitrarily negative. So, that means and that this limit x to zero uh, plus of the ln of x equals uh, the uh, w equals the minus infinity. So also in the ln of x we have an, a negative uh, uh, infinity limit. So you see uh, those limits occur in many basic functions. So it's good that we now know about them.